Welcome back to another episode of the Process and Automation Podcast with the Automation Guys. For today's episode, we have handpicked a couple of interesting automation quotes to see what we can learn from them and what we can apply in our automation projects today. to our today's episode with the title five automation quotes and what we can learn from them my name is sasha kutura and as always with me here today is anna von Rohn. hello anna hey sasha how are you doing i'm very good thank you so today we have a very very good uh, topic um, something different to what we usually do and uh, not too technical uh uh, heavy technical focused uh, automation quotes some uh, you some some quotes i see regularly and uh, i thought uh, yeah it will be a good a good yeah. um, chance for us to go through some of these really good quotes and um, see how applicable they are today yeah some of it's quite a, a i guess a, a lighter touch to the, the heavy duty automation topics that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we always talk about so for our listeners out there i think this will uh, probably bring out um, <clears throat> a lighter sort of uh, angle to to automation. Um, yeah. we, can, we can discuss it. I think a, a lot of these these quotes are actually quite true. Um, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and some of them have been uh, have been uh, communicated or have been put out there uh, a while back, isn't it? So when automation wasn't as strong as it is today, uh, so some re some some really good predictions there from from some very very interesting people and some very well known people. Yes, good. So first one I've got is automation may may be a good thing, but don't forget that it began with Frankenstein. And this is a quote <laughs> by an anonymous person. So, what what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's obviously. Uh, so sometimes I I as well uh, rephrase it, uh, phrase automation to magic. So, uh, but uh, so you need to really understand uh, uh, really uh, uh, what automation can do for you, and you really have to look into it um, uh, into every little aspect. But if uh, if if you don't know and uh, really understand what you're doing with automation lots of things can go wrong so it's so something uh, um yeah was was uh, was a bad process if you start automating that one definitely it will be a, a very very uh, it will be an automated bad process and uh, suddenly if you do address changes or so an automation suddenly makes uh, 10,000 of records uh, um, and updates wrong in, in systems and that could be quite uh, quite uh, horrific so i think the frankenstein um uh, comparison here yeah definitely is is true yeah <clears throat> but i think also it's about experimenting and you know sometimes you just have to throw yourself into the deep end um you know to 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 actually experiment with some things and, and see you know if i put these things together as long as you fail fast and you don't create lots of problems and i think that's okay i think a yeah. lot of a lot of research into a lot of areas in the world you know starts with experimentation and sometimes you have to create a frankenstein maybe only you will love it because you it's you're the creator <laughs> um, but at least it's something that you could look at and say well things can only get better from here on right that is the worst thing that could have ever happened in terms of an outcome um, you know, a few small tweaks and this this thing looks and behaves a lot better. And, and from there on, um, you know, things can only improve. So your Frankenstein can turn into a beautiful butterfly or something, right? Yeah, yeah. We 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 interesting, uh, Lisa. So if something can be automated, uh, we we really say um, it should be automated these days. But uh, yeah, definitely, it's uh, it's key to to look into it and. Uh, and yeah try try out things indeed um uh, and really see if it works and produces the benefits you need uh, okay the next one i have uh, here um 
automation is cost cutting by tightening the corners and not cutting them. So what uh, what do you think of that one? Um, I think that's an interesting one. Um, I think let's you know look at it and and don't eradicate stuff from it. Just look at it with the view to to keep things inside it, um, but but make it better. Um, and I think what this tells me is the person that wrote this this quote is probably a person that's a a, a details person. Um, that you know the devil is in the detail, right? And you know I think if you if you go into an automation initiative and you start cutting corners because hey it's automation it should be easy right we mm-hmm. will just do this very fast and we can we can cut all of these things out um and then once the automation is done um it will fail because there are certain things that um you need to include in the overall automation to make it meaningful um yes there are probably certain things that you can remove um as long as Moving it still, you know, results in 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 something that's meaningful and works more uh, like efficiently. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, it's, it's more really fine doing things a bit more efficient, isn't it? And uh, and uh, yeah, um, and not going really the, the drastic route. Yeah, yeah. So here's one for you: if you're looking at automation as a way to cut corners or avoid certain processes, your outlook is all wrong. Yeah, that's an interesting one. So this is an anonymous quote from from some from somebody. Um, and I think this probably is goes hand in hand with the previous one where it says, you know, don't don't cut the corners, just make make them tighter. Um, so I think this is probably to do with inclusion again of everything, but make it as good as it can be. Yeah, it's it's all, it's all about yes, stripping out everything what's uh, what's unnecessary, but uh, still keep keep everything in there what is really really needed. Yeah, and uh, and still. Yeah, still to make sure uh, you're not overloading um, you, you people. I think that's that's the big the big topic I've learned uh, in automation to to may really look at the people in the process and and uh, yeah make make it as easy as possible for for them. But uh, otherwise, uh, do not really cut corners too too crazy. Um, so yeah. your process is disrupted too much. I think I think also. Um, you know, especially now with a lot of the modern technologies that's emerging, automation technologies, AI, chatbot, you know, RPA, um, machine learning, uh, process mining. Um, you know, a, a lot of the vendors <clears throat> do promote the products, and of course, you know, these things are progressive. It does help businesses, but we sometimes <clears throat> get people that surprised that you still have to map out processes. You still have to go through that due diligence to, to sit down <clears throat> and understand things, right? You, mm. you, you can't just go ahead and, and say, okay, we, you know, we've got AI now, we're just gonna plug this in and this is just gonna uh, revolutionize the process and, and cut all of these things out. You know, if, if it was easy, it would be fast and everybody would do it super quick. Um, Luckily, we do have the tech to 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 um, deploy automation quite quickly, um, but you still need to look at the end to end requirements and end process. You can't just start cutting it out. And uh, I think some people, you know, still are surprised. They say, "Oh, so we still have to think about the processes and all the steps." And we're like, "Yeah, you still have to do that." And because they don't, they don't like to do this. Uh, I think this is why process mining is very successful these days, uh, because that that has sort of uh, the potential for businesses to 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 uncover 
the as is process um, and with, instead of you have to map it out but but still it doesn't take away that you have to then reflect on the outcome and the output and then um, uh, do something meaningful with it but but this is probably one one reason as well so automation can do lots of stuff very fast uh, but you still need to do stuff uh, you don't want to do it so take process mining to do uh, to find out again how your processes are really running um, so yeah it all comes comes to to, to to that understanding really yeah so uh, we've got one from bill gates um, yeah this is one of my favorite quotes really <laughs> so he says that automation applied to inefficient operation will magnify the inefficiencies yeah that's uh it's a bit what i mentioned as well so what i mentioned was the frankenstein one so if, if you if you if you do something uh in automate it was scale wrong uh, with automation and uh, then you will have a very very bad result potentially and here's the same um it's what bill gates uh, says and um it really makes sense to to get that process right uh, and uh, yeah and do not do unnecessary round trips on the process uh, i think with automation yeah it will it will be super easy and will not immediately uh, be noticed um only if you if you change data wrong uh with 10000 records or so then everyone will notice very quickly yeah well um i think the the key here is um, don't automate broken processes. Yeah. Um, and it's the whole garbage in, garbage out thing. And Absolutely. I think you you would just, by automation, uh, create problems faster if you do it wrong. Yeah. Like you say, you know, you could automate something um, using a robot and just create garbage 20 times quicker than uh, before. <clears throat> so I think it, it is something that you need to look at um, uh, the types of processes um, that that you automate are they efficient mm -hmm. uh, and you know spending time up front just to to look at those processes removing some some of those inefficiencies i guess coupled with the fact that the technology uh, to automate these these processes are quite mature usually would give you a very good result even if it's your first first time that that you do it that you and, and embark on an automation project. Um, so I think if it feels wrong, uh, it probably is wrong, and you probably <laughs> need to sit down and look at it and think: Is this creating more work, or is this actually reducing work? Yeah, I think we we had this uh, this whole problem in the early phases of uh, um, uh, getting processes, uh, moving processes to digital versions. So 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 very often we looked at it basically. Oh, we took uh, at this manual process. This was a form. So now we put sort of the same thing uh, into an electronic form. <laughs> it doesn't make the process better. Uh, it is now a digital process. But um, uh, very often the process was just uh, yeah, it was broken. Um, but that was very often our, our first attempt back then um, and nowadays you, you will uh, with the combination of this process mining as mentioned earlier uh, you will you will come up with um, with ideas which probably not even need um, need automation or even need a uh, uh, process um, uh, workflow and all that stuff so sometimes processes can be fixed even without technology uh, required um, once you know what is wrong and um yeah this is this is a good one and um so here's another one as well and i think it it sort of goes hand in hand with with the previous one the automation of garbage and it says um again this is by anonymous automation isn't a silver bullet and it won't fix your broken processes for you absolutely um, and <clears throat> i think if you look at uh, automation as a whole, you can automate broken things and create more faulty results if 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 you do automate that. Um, but but I think this is where user experience or the, the the term user experience was born, where if you look at a user journey and you've got an extremely noisy and complicated and broken process, um, and you know you involve people that interact with those processes that that's generally a cue for you if if those people are discontent with 
with with that experience um you have probably implemented something too complicated or that's broken and i think this is where user experience um, journey mapping is, is is quite important so if you have a let's say customer care for example um of course there's a lot of processes in customer care that you can automate but i think if you look look from a from a journey perspective map all of that out look at how that journey looks like how that journey will feel and i think that's generally a um a, a sort of a, a good yardstick for you to be able to determine is what we're going to do here actually a broken process or is this something that's going to end up in in the end users um being delighted yeah yeah very good so the next one uh this is an interesting one we picked uh, um as machines become more and more efficient and perfect so it will become clear that imperfection is the greatness of man so this is a, is a quote from ernst fisher so um yeah this is this is interesting uh yeah ai really makes everything uh, seem like perfect uh, these days isn't it anna yes that's right i think it it is a, a, a sort of a, a go to thing um you know but i also think it's in the in the eye of the beholder um and i think you know if you look at uh, you know humans i think we are full of imperfections and yeah. uh, i think that um as as we deploy more ai solutions um you know that that will probably be become more evident um and i think that it's probably okay um that we have got imperfections but i think what we should do is just focus our 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 energy and our time in 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 doing the right things mm. and leaving the automations where we're likely to make mistakes um you know to to something that's a lot more capable of making that yeah high volume isn't it high volume work really manual stuff six yeah. hours working on spreadsheets but of course we will make mistakes but if that is uh, something we can uh, with this high volume give to an ai uh, yeah perfect uh, i absolutely agree yeah and also i think um you know humans are good at building relationships and doing the things we do um so if if we can remove the the robotic elements out of humans uh, the repetitive type activities that these automations um you know are are designed to do then you know perhaps uh, humans can can focus a bit more on on creativity and creative sides uh you know and 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 use that you know use that to 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 to, to our own advantage um, yeah yeah i think that's uh, that's stuff isn't it so we uh, uh, we we can solve all these complex complex things very easily sometimes uh, where the ai uh, yeah would struggle because uh, or or it would require a huge amount of training to cover all these complex elements uh, sometimes you look at the little uh, legal phrase uh, we exactly know what's happening here and the ai will will will, will struggle to to find, find find the right answer so yeah absolutely let them do what they do best and uh, end to end processes these days is uh, are running best where we where we really select what the human is doing best at at a specific step in the process and what the ai is doing best then we have the best results really um so then uh, there's another um the one we noted down uh, humans like dealing with humans and all the non-robotic humanity that comes with them i think that's uh, i think that's clear so what we said already isn't it so we really really yeah we really like do human things and uh, and we don't like to call a call center with an ai uh, and and it's asking really stupid mechanical robotic questions isn't it we we, we can't really deal with that very well and we get frustrated <laughs> so yes yeah and i think like you know no no matter how clever these automations are and appear to be there's always going to be the need for a you know for a human team member or a, a, a human intervention to 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 jump in um and 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 be available right 
Um, yeah. yeah, I think the, the, this is the problem. These machines, uh, when I speak and call them, uh, they 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 will they can't handle sometimes my German uh, accent, and uh, and then yeah, it's getting it's really really getting frustrating. Um, um, getting getting through, uh, and some of these companies, uh, some companies are really strict. You can't get anywhere. Um, you don't even get normal customer service these days, uh, or rarely. Um, and, and for example, DHL. So if you, if you track a parcel, if you don't have the number, that's it. <laughs> and uh, if if they can't understand your number while while saying it, um, you're screwed. Um, yeah, and I think the AI these days, I think there's a really good aspect of um, the Google. You probably have uh, seen the videos on Google Assistant, um, where the Google Assistant is actually taking over um, your your little duties, maybe making a, a hair salon uh, appointment or ordering a pizza or making a restaurant reservation, that kind of stuff. So in the, the Google Assistant I is even going that far that it puts in when it calls the hair salon, it really has this um, this filling words like um uh, uh, so these kind of uh, uh, words in there to to appear more human, to appear more imperfect actually. Um, so so this is uh, what the realization is uh, these days. If it's AI, uh, it should behave like a human to be successful. Yes. Yeah. So what else have you got for us? You cannot endo even the best machine with initiative. Walter Lippmann. So I don't know who Walter Lippmann is, um, but I think what he's going on about is that um, automation itself cannot think for itself or decide how to complete tasks. It, it does, I guess, uh, to do what you tell it to do. Um, and it, and there's, there's sort of no, no, no flexibility. Um, I guess if even if you have complicated AI models, you still have to train it. Um, you know, it, it's not going to solve these problems on its own, um, and also it won't recognize you know broken processes or anomalies within processes. Um, yeah, so quite quite an interesting quote. Um, I think it sort of brings us back to the fact that it is still rules based, um, in, even if you have neural networks. Which is, you know, not strictly speaking, rules based, but it still works on probabilities that this is the sort of decision I need to make. Um, and you know, you train those 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 models using data, and if the data is broken, then the decision making will be broken. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And you know, that's 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 quite a tough thing. And it's, I think it's still, you know, it still would require a human to be able to look at it and say. Did this really do what I asked it to do? Um, and if there's a problem, it can't learn from its mistakes. Uh, ultimately, that that needs to go back to a human to, um, you know, to make a decision and, and fix the problem. Yeah, I think the, the the benefit of machines is that it can, based on uh, that feedback we give as a human, uh, how to deal with a specific situation that flows in this big big data data uh, database, where then automation and uh, with with the with the computer power of today, uh, it can come up with an answer very quickly, going through this vast amount of data to figure out what what was the feedback for this specific uh, issue someone solved, and then combining these things. Uh, obviously, that that appears maybe quite clever, but it is effectively just a yeah, just a, a, a series of very fast um, selects and uh, in, into data, isn't it? And, and coming yeah. up with uh, was 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 an answer, uh, but it's all coming from coming from us. Yeah, maybe it's not really really intelligent uh, as as we are. But yeah, it's it it's evolving, isn't it? So now with the cognitive, cognitive uh, RPA and all that stuff, uh, how how uh, clever is it really without uh, without good data? Yes, and like I said earlier, I think if if historic data is to go anything by, um, you know, you have to have really really good data, and all of the processes, or sorry, all of the mistakes you've ever made in your life um, would probably be embedded somewhere in your data. 
Mm. So I think this is sometimes where data can can be quite dangerous unless your data is is is, is really good and 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 really pure. So I think human in the loop is is still something that's um, that needs to be, uh, I guess, maintained. Um, you know, to to ensure that um, you know we we have got that the eye on the automations to make sure it does what it's supposed to do. Um, just to make sure it doesn't run away and, and do all sorts of things that, that you don't understand. And it's very hard then to unpick when it's made uh, those mistakes um, thousands and thousands of, of times over. I guess it's a bit like a production line where you manufacture cars. If, if, if there is a problem, you need to stop um, because otherwise it will just make thousands of, of defective products. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... I think there's always a place for for, for humans, um, you know, to, to 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 be in the loop, um, to to you know, to make to make decisions where mistakes are made. Um, and again, I, I think I see this also as, you know, in an ideal world, we would have, hundred percent automation. You know, everything will be fully automated. Uh, it's sort of a lights off approach and we can get on with, with our lives. You know, we, we can do things humans like, but I think the reality is that automation is always categorized in, in groups of automation where you've got your intent is to automate hundred percent. The reality is you can probably automate only 80%. Um, so that 20% is, is still going to involve uh, the remaining 20% is still going to revolve some, some human um, interaction, which is good because those are probably some of the, the fringe cases, the edge scenarios where it will cost a lot of resource to automate. And it might not be very predictable. You know, it might be a, a very ad hoc process that comes in now and then. Why automate it if a human is is dealing with it? Because it's something uh, that a human would be able to, to deal with uh, very quickly because, you know, uh, you can interpret something and say, oh, yeah, and I understand where this, this is something quite complicated. So that's in the 20% box. After 80%, you could probably say, well, if you sort of implement 80% automation and 70% of those can actually achieve 100% end-to-end, you're on a winner, right? So because, you know, if you can automate 70% of, of, mm-hmm. of things, uh, 10% is, is the exceptions on, on that sort of 70%. Which brings you to eighty, and the remainder is is, is manual processes. Um, you freed up people to only deal with twenty yeah, percent of the, the really really difficult things, and I think you know that's a very good benchmark to test yourself. So yeah, I actually succeeded. Yeah, if every business would achieve that, uh, I think uh, it would be amazing. It will be amazing, and I think this is this is part of the thing that um, we always try to explain to customers or prospective customers is that yes it's great you can do all of these automations um if you can automate 70 percent then you know you should consider that as a really really good success and in some people some people will say well you know why not strive for 100 i was like well you can but it would take infinite amount of time and resource to do that and it's simply just a theoretical achievement that you can that you can get if you can if you can achieve 70 percent actual measurable or you know automation um you're absolutely you know top of your class right because that 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 that, that is a really really high high degree of automation um and that remaining part is probably the processes shouldn't be automated it's probably something where you need one-to-one human interaction um, because it's, I don't know, a high-profile case you're dealing with, a high-profile account or, or something like that, where um, you'll just piss people off if there's a robot, a chatbot, trying to engage this contact and talk to them. <laughs> They'll be like, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Great. So, yeah, we, we, we said we will cover five automation uh, quotes, but uh, let's let's uh, over-deliver here. I, uh, I have one more on my list here, uh, which I really like. Automation is good so long as you know exactly where to put the machine. So this is a quote by Eliyahu Godrad. So um, 
yeah so this this is a is is a, is a good one because um it's all about yeah really identifying the right right processes um to to enable organizations to to thrive and yeah automating the wrong process yeah so we covered that already isn't it so but but it's a good one which uh, again comes very similar to to the frankenstein one and uh, to to the bill gates one yeah i guess it's it's a bit like building a beautiful car and certain elements of that you you still want a, a human to uh, you know stitch those leather seats so you can see some of the imperfections because it gives it just gives that character but some of the other things uh, you want to automate because it's sort of hidden away and it's something where you could argue that well this doesn't really add anything of value um, if if this if this person creates this part because it's somewhere hidden away in the mechanics of of this car right so I think it's it's sort of that um, that human touch sometimes is needed to do certain things, whereas that machine that does the automation, let it do the heavy lifting, boring stuff that nobody really cares about. It still needs to be there, but um, it could do that at an industrial scale because it's sort of somewhere in the gubbings of of this this you know this bigger picture. Um, so that's kind of the, 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 the sort of the way I see that. Mm. Um, you know, put put that automation machine where it should be. Those those boring bits, you know, but that needs to be precise. Um, very, you know, uh, um, you know, error free. Uh, and again, back to the car analogy, it's those precise engineering elements that you want to get that automation um, uh, sort of machine in. To, to create that sort of precision and do it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that also goes down to to really yeah you know, finding the right process and and to so we talked about this as well in our center of excellence episode to really um, to to really lots of these pilots isn't it to, to really figure out uh, which process has then the potential uh, of of doing uh, uh, I think really good things within the business and uh, I think failing that that the, the the experimentation and and really finding the right process. Um, I think yeah that that really I think will immediately uh, um sort of um yeah destroy sort of the the um, users expectations customer expectations in these technologies I think it is it is important to find the right one and um to, as well to kick off and scale your RPA journey um because very often what we have seen you know, we we pick Sort of the low-hanging fruit. Sometimes we we concentrate on that one, but sometimes this is not really the good one to excite everyone. Yes. And and um, it seems like an easy one, but yeah, who cares if this spreadsheet is automated? If it doesn't have that impact, uh, no one will then say, okay, now scale this thing, and we will fi fill up our twelve months, thirty-six months kind of RPA pipeline. Um, so yeah, that's a very important to to know where to put the machine yeah true and also i think looking at the types of automations that you you do i think you you need to look at the touch points with with other humans and um you know if, if i look at say for instance a, a customer onboarding i want to have that as human centric as possible um yes there could be a lot of automation behind the scenes um but if you uh, deal with a customer, for example, um, you know you, you you want them to feel um, that they are actually speaking to another person, um, and that person uh, actually um, provides them with an experience. You know, if if it's a customer onboarding experience, so that's really good. Um, this 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 customer should know that um, they feel safe. They 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 know that this process and this person they're dealing with is. Um, uh, very good they know you um, and they can onboard you very quickly yes there could be automation again in, in the background that supports that whole journey um, but they shall they, 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 they will still be that element where um, you know I think it would be inappropriate to 
have like a 100% very cold automated customer onboarding where this person, mm. oh, well, I'm just speaking to robots now. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm onboarded in five minutes and it, it's just been, <laughs> uh, the Skynet experience. Um, you know, h- how, how will this look like? Am I actually going to deal with humans? Or is this really just like a, 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 a sort of a, a thing in the ether that I'm going to deal with in the future? Um, whereas other elements where, you know, human touch is not necessary. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think that that comes back to the point, you know, with automation machine where it should be um, and use that savings you make by automating all of these boring things in actually giving people time to interact with other people and build those human to human touch points in your process um, because you free time up from these people and now they could, Uh, come to work excited and want to deal with customers and have a smile on their face because they know they don't have to churn through 5,000 transactions going into Oracle and and logging um, transactions in a a robotic fashion. Boring day at the office, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice. Um, So this was a different kind of episode. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone liked this, um, um, uh, this this type of episode. Um, Yeah, if you can give us feedback um, uh, in the um in itunes um on the on the podcast or send us feedback on on our website the um and yeah and you know, tell us if you if you like that episode and if you like to to get more more automation quotes um uh, automation quote episodes that that would be really good to know and um yeah thank you very much for 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 joining us today and um yeah see you soon and uh, let's automate it Unfortunately, that's it again with this episode of the Process and Automation podcast. If you like this episode, please give us a five-star rating and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss any upcoming episode. We hope you will tune in next time and until then, let's automate it. <laughs>